So it's been a while since we checked in to see what you guys have all been up to. So I think that's uh, what we'll do today. Fan Showdown, Season 5, Episode 6. And to start off, we have Charles and his fan, Turbo Pump. Now, Charles didn't say much about his design other than he wanted to create a pump using a, a turbo impeller. And after messing around a bit, this is kind of what it evolved into. Now, Charles said he purposely avoided putting anything fancy on the back here because he wants the air to get in and out as quick as possible. But given how small the intake diameter is on this bad boy, I don't know how much air it's going to be able to move. Now, it was inspired by a turbo, and we know turbos make everything cooler. Bruh. And they do make a lot of pressure, so that's a plus. So it should be able to at least move air through a radiator. Today's video is sponsored by World of Tanks. World of Tanks is a free online game accessible to anyone, whether you're a novice or a pro. Jump in and experience the same thrill as 100 million players and interact with a global community. World of Tanks has a massive arsenal of tank destroyers, artillery, light, medium, and heavy tanks. How you want to play is up to you with over 800 tanks to choose from. Roll out across open fields, climb steep hills, sneak through forests, or tear across deserts. With over 40 battle areas, there's always something new to see. Historical accuracy and inspiration means authentic models and vehicle characteristics that make you feel like a real tank commander taking part in a furious armored offensive. So if you're ready to take command of your favorite tank, download World of Tanks using the first link in the description below. During registration, use code COMBAT to get 7 free days of premium access, 250,000 credits, the premium tank Cromwell B, Tier 6, and 3 rental tanks available for 10 battles each. So click the link in the description below to get in on the action. Next up we have the Radish, which was created by Stefan. Now the inspiration for the Radish is actually pretty interesting. It's something you might have actually heard about because it's recently been making the rounds in the, in the news again. And that's the open fan. Now most of you probably know what a modern high bypass jet engine looks like, and you might even know a little bit on how it functions. In a, in a nutshell, essentially you have this humongous fan on the front of it, and that fan is connected to the low pressure turbine, which produces the force to turn it. And that big old fan produces a majority of the, the thrust of the entire engine by moving a huge volume of air around the core and out the back. For example, like the GE NX-1B, which is the one of the jet engines used on the 787 Dreamliner, has a bypass ratio of 9.5 to 1. That means that 9.5 times more air flows around the combustion chamber than through it. And in the case of the GE NX-1B, the uh, bypass air produces around 70 to 80% of the total thrust of the engine. In general, the bigger that you can make that big old fan, uh, the more efficient your engine's gonna be. Also, they make the engines quieter because all that air you know, moving around the exhaust of that turbojet kind of acts like a muffler, which is, which is interesting in and of itself. However, there's a limit on how big you can make that fan on the front of your jet engine. You know, the bigger you make the fan, the bigger the duct's gotta get, the more complex the duct is, the more weight it adds. And this is where the open fan architecture comes in because the open fan jet doesn't need a duct. So you can put a much bigger fan on an open jet than you could on a regular standard high bypass turbojet engine which improves efficiency. With all that said, that's kind of what Stefan used as his inspiration for this fan. He took that design of the open jet blades or fan jet, and he tried to cram it inside of the space provided by the A12X25. So I pose to you the question, if you take an open jet and then you stick it inside of a fan frame, is it still, is it still an open rotor type design? Either way, the fan looks pretty cool. And he also included this rear stator assembly with a, with a cone to furthermore improve performance. However, it's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna give us problems this cone that you can see on the back here now when we try to mount this onto a radiator that's gonna cause a little bit of an interference issue and i'm not gonna lie i actually didn't even notice this until after it was printed uh, for some reason i like looked at the models and assumed that that would go on the front because of the, the cone there but but yeah it doesn't so unfortunately when we test this on the radiator we're gonna have to we're gonna have to just leave that off Sorry. Now this next one I included not because I think it's gonna do all that good, but because I think it looks really cool. This is the Triskelion, which I think is how it's pronounced, and it was created by Tom. Now again, Tom didn't say much about his design. You guys don't really like to tell me much about your designs anymore, but uh, all he did say was, if it spins, it blows. And I don't know if that means if it spins, it's gonna move air, or if he means like if it spins, it's just not gonna be that good. Um, either way, I thought it looked cool. 
If I was to guess what the inspiration of this fan would be, I think it's that Shero bow propeller. Remember that thing we, we uh, talked about in the MIT Toyota fan video? I think that kind of looks pretty close to, to, to that one if it was morphed into a fan itself. And I know a lot of you guys in the comments section of that video said that those things actually work pretty good. And I've seen a lot of people say online they work pretty good. They're still pretty pricey for me to want to grab one and try it out, but they do look cool. And I hope this thing works at least somewhat as good as those supposedly do. Now, this last one, <laughs> I saved for, I saved this one for last, not because I think it's going to do the best, but because it's, it's really original. It's something we've never seen before, which is crazy to say, this is what season five of the fan show. Now we've tested a million fans probably. And, uh, it's funny to know that there's there's still original designs out there. You just gotta think real hard. This is the XL and it was created by Rodrigo and it is a 157 millimeter beast. Rodrigo wanted to make a fan larger than what the A12 X25 could manage and he still wanted to use the A12 X25 to drive it. So what he did was come up with this. The 157 millimeter fan is actually mounted inside of this hub here like so and the a12x25 actually goes all the way up on top now the face of the xl and the face of the a12x25 actually look at each other or face each other and that is because there is a drive shaft in between the two and that is how the the xl gets powered the xl fan itself is mounted onto the shroud using a 608 ceramic bearing i chose to use ceramic bearings rather than just steel bearings because i was hoping that the ceramic bearing would have a little bit less noise and spin a little easier. I'm guessing that when this thing is up and running, the thing we're gonna hear the most is gonna be that bearing. On the back side of the XL, we just have essentially an adapter that takes that 157 millimeter fan back down to the standard 120 millimeter size so we can connect it to our radiator. Now, I don't know how well this is gonna do pushing air through a radiator, but it's a very clever design. If this was airflow only, I think this thing would have a pretty good shot, but pushing air through a radiator, I don't, I don't have the most confidence in it but a, a plus for creativity. Let's see if that bearing's as loud as I think it's gonna be. The XL came in around 55 dBA. The Triskelion came in around 50.3 dBA. The Radish came in around 49.6 dBA. And the Turbo Pump came in around 43.6 dBA. The XL really wasn't that loud. The bearings obviously were the loudest thing that we, we heard, uh, like we expected. This thing was pretty quiet. I expected this to be a lot louder than it was, which I found interesting. Now, it'll be even more interesting to see how it moves air through this thing, because, you know, a turbo kind of likes to fling air out to the side. So, how's this going to do? The XL came in around 286 feet per minute of airflow. The Triskelion came in around 353. The Radish came in around 459. And the Turbo Pump came in around 405. Placing the Radish in first place, the Turbo Pump in second, the Triskelion in third, and the XL in fourth. Overall, they finished 7th, 14th, 17th, and 22nd, respectively. So there you have it. We're back. We got new fans, new ideas, which is insane if you want to get in on the action of the fan showdown make sure to head down to the description below there will be information on where to send your fans and your designs and resources you can use but essentially in a nutshell i need you to send me at least an stl model to the fan showdown at gmail.com make sure you look at the pdf for the fan showdown to make sure you maintain the critical dimensions that are required for your fan to fit on the a12 x25 body unless you got something crazy upstairs like this thing and you can you know if your design calls for screws and bearings or whatnot it's all good you just tell me what you need i'll put it together thank you guys for watching if you want to help out the channel make sure to get subscribed i'll see you in the next one